Welcome back. I'm Alan Hall. This is the Uptime Wind Energy Podcast. As you're listening to this episode, Joel Saxon and I are on an airplane to Amsterdam, hopefully, and we are going to be at Blades Europe Forum, which is a, a, a massive event talking all about wind turbine blades. And we hope to see a number of people that have been on the podcast at that conference, and we're going to hopefully meet a, a bunch of new people there too. This week for the podcast, we're going to highlight one of the interviews from earlier this year, and it's with Stefan Perigo, director of PES Wind. And the latest issue of PES Wind just came out. And if you don't have your copy, you can get a free copy online at PESWind.com. And the cover story on PES Wind for this issue is about lightning. It's written by yours truly. So this is a really good episode. It's a good interview with Stefan Perigo. But if you haven't downloaded that PES Wind, go ahead and get that done because there's a, an, I've seen advance of some of the articles that are inside that it's a really good Really good uh, issue of that magazine, and it includes a story about lightning from yours truly. So here again is Stefan Perigo, director of PES Wind. Today's special guest is Stefan Perigo, uh, director at PES Wind. And PES Wind is a website that provides news and information about the wind energy industry. It is part of the Power and Energy Solutions Network, which also includes websites dedicated to solar energy, energy storage, and other renewable energy technologies. PES Wind's website features articles about new wind projects, technology developments, and industry trends. In addition to its website, PES Wind also publishes a quarterly magazine, which is beautiful. <laughs> the magazine features in-depth articles about wind energy topics, as well as interviews with industry experts. Uh, if you're not familiar with PES Wind, you should be. So, Stefan, welcome to the program. Appreciate being here. It's been uh, a long time coming. Yes, it has, actually. And I've been asked a few times by um, a number of my clients on the, you know, especially at the um, recent Global Offshore Wind on the on the floor itself to say, you know, wh when are you getting on? So uh, um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do it at the show itself, but, you know, here I am now and it's a pleasure to be here. Just a couple of touch points here where we get started. I think when you read PES Wind, you realize, wow, this is this magazine is brilliant, right? There's a, a lot of good information in every magazine. It, plus, it has beautiful photos. The, the magazine itself looks exquisite. Uh, how long have you guys been at this, uh, making this magazine? Yeah, so a bit about us, you know, we've been going sort of nearly 20 years now, but it used to be a renewable energy publication. Um, and then we soon realized that we needed to essentially split it um, into a pure wind publication and a pure um, solar publication. So we did that. Um, and then ever since then, it's just sort of grown in terms of the, the, you know, the content, the quality, and we're refining it all the time. So it's just been getting better and better. And, and you know, and the sort of type of companies we work with, you know, and the type of, um, you know, interviews and people that we're working with is getting stronger, which is increasing, you know, the value of the content. Um, and yeah, so for that, we're really, really pleased. Yeah, your magazine does not include press releases, which I think is very fascinating because a lot of information you get uh, in regards to wind energy are just press releases. I mean, that's, a, you know, for us, a, a, you know, a conscious decision. We, we, you know, we're happy to put press releases on our website. Um, we just believe a press release is is for that, you know, for going online for immediate release to be read and digested, you know, whether that's on an email um, campaign or just on, you know, online. Uh, but for us, the print version, it has to be exclusive to us. So we're trying to keep the editorial integrity extremely high. It can't be seen anywhere else uh, before it's seen within our publication. Obviously, you know, after that, um, you know, people can read it, share it on LinkedIn or, you know, via any other um, platform they want. But um, until it's gone out with us, then, you know, that, that's kind of where we're at. Well, and the thing about PES Wind is that it's written by industry experts. All the articles are from people in the industry who are very knowledgeable about the subject of which they are writing about. Absolutely. You're, you're one of them. I, I am one of them, actually, just full disclosure. I've written a couple of articles, and I have been through the editorial process <laughs> that, that PES Wind puts everybody through. The quality of content is only there because of the editing that happens behind the scenes, which no one sees except for the people writing the articles. It's, it's a tremendous amount of work that goes in. The, the, the standards are extremely high. It's like writing 
a, a college level uh, paper as because your editing staff is magnificent, by the way. So for us, that's what we pride ourselves on. You know, we 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 not only feel we have you know the best looking uh, publication in the market. We we know we spend a lot of money on the look and the feel of the publication. Uh, but that is, you know, none of that really matters until, you know, you, you actually get into the content and the content is key. Um, we really pride ourselves on editor integrity. Uh, again, like we said about press releases, it's not just a case of putting anything you want in there. Um, you have to, you know, s submit the editorial, for instance, but then it does go through an editorial process. And sometimes editorials can be rejected um, or, you know, sent back with some pointers. Something we, we, we do quite strongly is to point out where, um, where things can be improved or suggestions on topics. Um, and especially for, for, for us, we know what works for our vehicles. So we know what works well for PES. We know what works in the print magazine. We know what works well on LinkedIn, you know, for, for instance, in terms of traction. Um, so we're trying to just do a, a, you know, a, a combination of keeping it very, very slick, very strong. Um, and most importantly, we want people to want to read it. You know, that's, that's what it's all about. I want to read every time I get it. First of all, it, it comes from the Royal Mail, so I always have special mail coming in. <laughs> so I, I know it's something special. And then when you open it, like, wow, this this looks great. Uh, it's always a, a little surprise to see it and to thumb through it immediately to, to see all the content that's in it. There's a lot of deep content. This is not shallow stuff. You, if you're interested in Win Energy, this is a, a magazine to read because it, it explains what's going on behind the scenes a little bit. And that's, that, that is eye-opening because otherwise you wouldn't understand some of the reasoning and rationale for what is happening in the industry. We're, we're trying to keep things as fresh and as topical, topical and as up-to-date as possible. So, um, you know, people ask us about an editorial calendar and we just say we don't have a strict editor, editorial calendar purely because we don't know what's going to be happening in the market in a month's time, let alone six months. So we try to be reactive to the market. We try to see what's going on. Um, so a lot of the independent articles can be from associations or projects that are taking place, but right up to date. Um, and that also goes on to, to, to the clients that we're working with. You know, their projects are probably just right up to date. So the technology or, or you know, um, if it's on a product, you know, we can say what's happening right now. Um, and then that, again, that keeps it interesting for the reader. Oh, it, it really does. And how many eyeballs, how many people are reading this every quarter? For the print version, we've got 26,000 copies. Um, we have currently, I've just, just on LinkedIn, so we do a combination. So obviously we've got the, the print publication, which we, we send out. We then send out a full digital version of the publication and our e-circulation is just over 35,000. So the print magazine would go out, then the digital magazine goes out. Um, and currently, just literally today, um, on our LinkedIn, PS Wind LinkedIn page, it's got 2 million post impressions in the last 30 days. So, wow. You know, we're really proud of that, especially because we only started the, the PS Win page um, around five months ago now. And that, that was a conversation with yourself. And I'd spoken to, a, you know, a few others who were asking me, how come, you know, how come you don't have it? Um, and the reason for that at the time, and it's still true to, to, to this day, is because we, I like to share the, the articles myself. It comes. It gets the, a, a more personal approach to sharing sharing the articles, um, and the people that have the exclusive articles within the publication see the benefit of that because the the, the amount of views and the amount of likes and the comments are you know are far greater when, through myself um, as opposed to sharing on the PS page. But the PS Win page is there also for you know content, videos, um, and also sharing the full you know the full publication, which the last. Uh, full publication that we shared as a PDF on that page had has now over 70,000 views. So, you know, we're really pleased with that. So there obviously is a huge demand for wind knowledge and wind insight. Yeah, that that speaks to that. It's not just us. You know, there are plenty of, you know, there are plenty of other companies out there, yourselves doing a podcast, which I think is fantastic. I wanted to use the, um, the, the, the slogan that we want to be, you know, the voice of wind energy, but I think you've probably taken that by now. So um, I'll let you have that. But, <laughs> you know, but that's, that's, that's what we, you know, we, we really do want to be the, you know, the voice of, of, of wind, e you know, wind energy and, and what's going on right now. And we want to, you know, we want to share that, share it with, with people on your, you know, your listeners, but also people on LinkedIn, you know, where people are, you know, hanging about now for, for work and, and looking for, for, for the right type of information. 
um, and that can only add value to to us as a company, but more importantly to, to the people that we're working with. And you see things before the rest of the industry does because they have to submit articles to you before things go out to the rest of the world. What are what are some of the more intriguing things we should be looking forward to over the next couple of months? Blade maintenance and blade integrity seems to be really key and topical right now. And obviously, um, the use of robots, the use of technology is is really speeding up. And you know, five well, more than five years ago, it was you know drone, drones were sort of the, the new thing. Now that's sort of been surpassed by um, you know you've got companies like you know Blade Bug that you know well with using their robots, aerons, um, you know, with their type of robots. But something we had, we featured in the last magazine, which I think will be big, is the VR, um, virtual reality, you know, with the headsets for, for safety. Um, we worked with a company called Synergy XR. They're a, they're a Danish company. Um, but when I, when I go to the shows and the events now, everybody's got the headsets on. So from, from just demonst- demonstrations of their own products, but for me, you know, the safety aspect is is where I see the... The, the, you know, the sort of the, the big uh, push because people can, you know, rather than going offshore to learn, they can do it virtually and it, all the safety aspects are, are sort of taken away. You can learn before going out and actually, you know, harming yourself. Well, and I, I think, you know, we discussed earlier going to shows and there's a lot of shows in different parts of the world. You really focus on four. And I thought that was really fascinating because I've been to probably half of the shows you mentioned, and and it's a totally different vibe. There are some shows that have a, a lot of people, and there's just a buzz in the in the hallways. And there are other shows that are interesting, and they're just glad to see everybody, but they're just not the same. Uh, which shows? Which shows are PES Wind really invested in right now? So for us, we because like I said, we only produce the four publications per year. So for for the end of this year, we've got our September issue, which we're we're putting together right now, um, and that's a fair, uh, ahead of the Husum Wind Energy event in Germany. Um, and then the uh, our last um, issue is in November, um, ahead of the offshore energy event in Amsterdam, uh, which has a big offshore wind focus as well. Um, but yeah, so generally they're ahead of next year. It will be March um, ahead of the the Wind Europe event in Bilbao. Um, but we've also um, teamed up with the IPF um, in New Orleans, so that's going to be our first issue. And then June is always ahead of the Global Offshore Wind, which is in the UK. And then September next year, which is our big one, which is ahead of Wind Energy Hamburg. And then again November ahead of Offshore Energy. But next year, the Wind Energy Hamburg one is for for us. Well, I, I would say for the industry, not only the biggest show to be at, but everybody will be there. Has the you know the biggest buzz, and it's great. And for us, we're already making bookings for that issue now. So um, you know, it's fortunate. It was it, yeah, it's good for us to to sort of already look that far ahead. And I'm sort of I'm contacting clients already just to say, look, I know it's early, but these are the dates. Um, and because we're because we you know thirty sort of around thirty to thirty five companies tops, we we sort of you know call it that's enough. So um, we, t- yeah, we, we, it's not hard for us to fill the space. That is amazing. I guess that all makes sense. And if you're going to those shows for sure, those, and I think those are the shows to really show up to. And yeah, if, if one thing about PES Win Magazine, when we were in Copenhagen, uh, for the conference in Copenhagen, there are a lot of copies of PES Wind in the hallways and at the booths, uh, because everybody wants to, you know, they want to see it, right? They want to see it. They want to see what's in it. They're talking about what's in it. It, it becomes part of that show conference uh, news piece that everybody wants to be a part of, right? And yeah, if you're if you're uh, you know a, a company that wants to get some eyeballs on your products, where else are you going to go besides PES Wind? I think it makes total sense because you and you do a good job of being at the shows and promoting <laughs> the magazine too. You guys are hustling out there. Yeah, and I think it's the for us at that point, it's our sort of our, our the hard work's done, um, and it's almost our time to sort of go out, meet the clients, meet potential new clients. But you know, we, I sort of we're quite happy then because you know the the, the magazine's done, the magazine's at the show, um, and it's time for us, yeah, to to promote it. We we want people to see it, we want people to be engaged, uh, we want people to read it, and ultimately, you know, we like the feedback. You know, it, was it a good issue? Are there things we can do better? And you know. I've, spoken in the past that to many times you know we're we're experts or we're we're pretty good at what we do but we don't say we know everything and we're happy to to listen to ideas listen to feedback could you do this you know can you try this um you know and and even down to um you know 
promote different things on LinkedIn, different ideas. You know, we're, we're, we're open to ideas and just to see what can we do next? What can we help, um, you know, help our clients do? Yeah, and the LinkedIn piece is really fascinating to me. Uh, we are on LinkedIn as a company, and I think a lot of uh, companies in wind are there. That is a real community that maybe five years ago did not really exist at this level. It's really grown substantially. Yeah, and it has. And, I, and I'm, I'm always amazed how some companies still haven't embraced it enough. You know, I mean, I've had, I've had companies where I've shared their article and they haven't, say, reshared it or commented on it or, or you know, and, and I sort of think you're missing a trick because it's, you know, it's, it's, you've done, for, even for the client, they've done all the hard work already. They've invested in it, time, money, effort, and they've got that piece now. And that's what I say to, to our clients just to say, here it is. Share it. I will share it on LinkedIn, but feel free to you know to share it and spread it and get that message out there because that's that's key. That's what they that's what they've invested in us for, and now you've got that piece and you know <laughs> let it out. I say right, let people see it. I I, I agree with you there. It, it that is a little odd. I know I, we've seen the same thing from some other companies, and I always wonder like why you have a great product. You just get make more noise, and if you're in PES wind, you're making a tremendous amount of noise then amplify it, right? Use LinkedIn to amplify it. Because of the amount of time and effort, like we said, and the, and the quality of the publication, we're now finding more and more companies want to be associated with the brand as well. So it's kind of, if we're associated with that, it just, it means we're, we're also of that level, you know? And it, it just means, oh, oh, we're in that PS magazine. It just, it, you know, there's that nice link between quality and quality. And that's what we, you know, that's what we try to say to people. And that, that's from startup companies, all the way up to companies, you know, with a hundred thousand employees, there is no difference in the process with us. We don't. We treat every single company with the exact same approach. Um, whether you know a one-man band or a hundred thousand in their company, it doesn't make a difference. You know, we we will give everyone the same amount of time, the same amount of expertise. Um, we want to do a great job for 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 each client because again, if we do a good job, they're happy. They'll come back to us eventually. You know, whether it's straight away or again, and also they'll tell people. Um, and so that's what you know. That's what we strive to do. Exactly. And what is the process if I'm a company and I I want to have a, an editorial or an article about my Whizbang product and I need to get the I need to get the information out to the world? How does that process start? Like, can you just walk us through what that looks like? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, generally, it's uh, companies I've I've approached, and sometimes we I've I've had a company today email just say you know I've I've actually picked up the the PS Win magazine at the Global Offshore Wind event, and you know how, how do I get in? What what do I need to do? So it's a case of yeah, you know, so they'll 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 come to us direct, or you know we'll 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 approach companies if there's certain topics we really want to cover, um, and then it's just a case of saying. Okay, what type of package do you want? You know, we 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 try to offer everybody what we would call our premium sponsorship package, which is obviously inclusion in the print magazine, um, the the editorial in print online, so on the digital magazine, as well as all the you know all the the LinkedIn uh, promotion, and it just gives an overall feel for what we do to generate the best results for for them um, as a you know as a as a client, because it's like I say, essentially we we want to do a good job. We want people to to recognize it, to read it, to, to give them feedback, um, because then again, they'll come back to us. Um, and like, you know, we talk about LinkedIn, you know, I've spoken to you about your own article. You, you know, we post it twice. Um, and, you know, I said to you the first time I posted it, it had over uh, 10,000 views. And I posted it again um, last week or, or this week. Um, and it's now over 14,000 on the second time. So just, and that's just me. And I, not I noticed, because uh, I took note, it got reposted 10 times this time. And ten times last time. So when you think it's twenty four thousand views, just me, but all of those people reposting it, it's just you know it's generating even more. Um, and that's like you know you, you understand when I was saying about LinkedIn and reposting and just getting out there. That's that's good for you. It's good for us. You know, and that's that's what we're trying to do. Oh yeah, it's good for everybody. And it, if I think one of the maybe um, little scary parts, if you go down the PES win pathway, is that you you have to write an article, right? You have to spend a couple of hours, maybe a couple of days uh, writing a piece. And, and that's the scary part for most people, right? Uh, but when you get to the editorial staff on PES Wind, they're super helpful. Like you, you know what works and what doesn't work and, and how to phrase things and how, what the approach is. You, you walk people through that process. So it's not, 
it's not overwhelming. No, and we're here to like you know we can do um, as little or 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 you know some companies will supply us with a fantastic article that that's very well written, doesn't need much editing, and it's thought provoking. And you know it's it's a it, it still goes through the, the the process of going through the editorial board in terms of is it quality, does it meet our you know our standards? Will it you know will it be good for them you know give the value uh, give the the publication value? Um, and then other companies say to us, okay, look, pretty much we we don't really know what to do. What's the what's the approach? And then we can lead them all the way through it. With our editors can you know write a piece for them, or we can give them guidance. Um, and interview, we can obviously do interviews as well, which were very, very well. The interviews are fantastic. I personally like to, I would always say to a company, work with us in two issues in the year, um, um, and then always have an interview and then separately an article. The interviews work very, very good because they put, you know, generally put a face to the name of the company. And it's quite nice for people to, like yourself, if you're at an event, everybody knows you. So it's okay. Oh, there, there's Alan. He's in, you know, he's in PES. And it's, it's, it's just a nice, nice approach. Um, or like I said, I had, a, I had a, uh, an email today from um, Covestro, the uh, uh, material company. Um, so they were asking us about um, getting involved in the September issue. You know, what are your thoughts? And I, you know, I, they, they gave me what they thought would, would be their thoughts on, on an article. And I said, look, that, I think that would be perfect. But again, if you can make it controversial, if you can make it thought provoking, you know, if you can, it, it's about generating debate or generate generating a you know some sort of um, talk. So s some companies might say, "Well, I don't like that. Well, I don't think that's the right approach." Okay, well, tell me why, and then it's good for you, good for them. Yeah, I, I do think there needs to be a, some pushback in wind and some new ideas in the wind industry. We're seeing obviously some problems that are large scale problems that are happening, and one way to get over those problems is to be a little bit thought provoking and say, hey, maybe there's a different way to go about solving some of these problems. And I think PES Wind does a really good job of that, of, of making you think a little bit like, oh, I, I never thought about this as a way to, I'll, I'll give you the Identiflight, right? So Identiflight detects birds in a very unique way, and it slows down wind turbines that are in the bird's path, not all the wind turbines, just the ones in the pathway. Like, Oh, that's a really unique way of trying to solve that problem crazy isn't it <laughs> oh yeah it's insane uh rosemary barnes our, our co-host on the uptime podcast walked us through how well that system works so i read about it in pes wind i learned a lot about it and i then i talked to rosemary as my sort of backup she goes oh yeah that system is magnificent <laughs> in terms of uh, keeping power losses to a minimum and saving a whole bunch of birds you know, i would never have known that without pes wind and again that's what we're trying to do you know it, we're trying to get the there, there, there will be companies that um, haven't you haven't, haven't heard of or haven't heard of their technology. And again, other companies you might just know the brand, so you don't really know what they're doing. And again, in in the publication, we we're we're really trying to educate the market, you know, so educate them on what not only the technology but the uses, the needs, you know, and and identifying a problem. But here's the solution to go with it. So um, again, it works very very well. So how long does it usually take for an article once it gets into you? So I write an article. I'm sitting here in Massachusetts. I'm writing this controversial article about lightning protection of wind turbine blades. I send it over to the UK. And then how long does that process take? Just, just walk everybody through how long it takes to get it back and get it released. Generally, a few, it can be you know a week to two weeks because we, we want to obviously get a chance to there, there's because it goes through a few processes in terms of not just one editor will have a look at it. There will be an editor that will will look at it from a uh, you know, technical standpoint. There'll be an editor just in terms of you know, the actual language, um, because obviously we're dealing with a lot of foreign, um, foreign companies as well. So we've got specialists that can deal with you know, the language side of things and then technical side of things. Um, so it goes through a few processes. And then obviously we, we would get it designed so, and then sent back to the client um, as if it would look in the magazine. And then again, they, have, they still have time to say, like it or you know or can we change this and move that so it's again it's very flexible and ultimately we're wanting to get the best for the client uh, within the publication as long as it falls within our guidelines yeah so it really is a, a, a somewhat quick process it isn't like you submit it and then two months later you get an email like yes it's been accepted it's not like a research paper if everybody's familiar with research papers the reason we did um I only do four per year is just to give the clients enough time in between each issue to actually spend the time to to write it you know we we're not saying 
Um, it's January, so you've got a couple of weeks because then the February issue is coming out, then the March issue. We want people to take their time. We want people to really think about what they're writing and think about how they're going to approach the reader. You know, it's not just about saying, hey, we're, we're this company and we've got the best at this, this, this. It's about, okay, what am I trying to, to, to get across? Um, and, uh, you know, something we, we speak about is the tone. So we want the tone of the of the company to come through, but through our vehicle. You can read into who they are as a company, and I think that makes life a little bit easier. If I've worked with many of the companies that show up in PES Wind, and I, I know the flavor of the company before I even really engage with them because I've I've read about them. Yeah, it's magnificent. Well, Stefan, it's been really good having you on the podcast. Stefan, how do companies reach out to you? How do they connect with you? Send me an email. Um, that's the best way. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. I have so many companies reaching out to me on LinkedIn now. Um, and that's, you know, that's the best way. Yeah. And if, if you're interested in reading PES Wind, just go on the web. Absolutely. www.peswind.com. Um, yeah. Take a look. Uh, have a look at the, you know, the digital versions. And, you know, if you want a print copy, send me an email. Sounds great. All right, Stefan. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really appreciate you joining us. I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much. Thank you.